Cool. So, um, welcome. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So I guess we can start by, uh, if you tell the audience a bit about you and how you, how you started coaching and what you do. Yeah, sure. So my name is Sid. I am an online and private gymnastics coach. I first started coaching mainly through like social media mm -hmm. because I was like beginning to train myself and I wanted to record my progress and share it with other people. And then that kind of turned into me creating tutorials on YouTube, mm -hmm. Instagram, which then led to me kind of move on to more personal training as well, doing classes and yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. So awesome. it all started with, with Instagram. That was how I got, got into it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. And I noticed on your Instagram, um, you've created something called Gymnastics Movement. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you can tell the audience a bit, bit more about that, how, how you developed it, what it involves. Yeah, sure. So gymnastics movement is my approach to training mm -hmm. through gymnastics training. Yeah. And it's basically like a like all the concepts and, and, and approaches that I have learned into what I find is the, the best approach mm -hmm. to develop strong, flexible and healthy bodies. So, yeah, it's kind of the approach that I like to use to help other people get fit, yeah. feel well and just become like the best version of themselves. Yeah, yeah. And what I like about your account is, the, I mean, the videos that you're putting out, it, it speaks for itself. Um, yeah. you, see, you see some accounts, they're putting out video, well, they're putting out programs, and it's a case of the coach can do all the movements, which is yeah. great, but you don't see very many clients doing the same movements. And I think that's what's yeah. so great, it's like the really good programs from the kind of the mediocre ones, because yeah. especially in flexibility, um, you find that there's very much a follow me, do what I do kind of mentality. Um, yeah. so kind of like in yoga um, mm. and contortion, you know, you, you get yeah. someone who's naturally hypermobile and they'll say, yeah. oh, this program and, you know, you get a 50 year old guy who can't even touch his knees and he's like, well, why isn't this working? But what, what I like about yours is that you show the results with your clients, which is, which is fantastic. But um, I mean, who are some of the, the kind of important people or figures that um, have helped you in your coaching career? Well, I guess the most influential one was uh... Uh, Christopher Summers from Gymnastic Bodies because he was the one that got me into like the whole gymnastics mm -hmm. uh, fitness scene. So I read his book Building the Gymnastics Body like book. probably seven or eight years ago. Right. And when I saw like those gymnastics gymnastic positions, I was like, this is something that I want to learn. Mm. And that was like the introduction to me getting started with gymnastics. Yeah. Yeah. And that led me down to where I am now. So that was a huge influence. And besides that, it's been a lot of people. It's not been like one specific person. It's been, I've been following a lot of people on YouTube and Instagram with and like just taking the, the best concepts from each, yeah. like each uh, coach. And, and then I use it like in a way that I find helps me and my clients for what our goal is. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't like that mentality of just, this is the approach. Mm -hmm. because there is not one approach because everyone has specific goals and and different goals yeah so we need to find an approach that suits them and it's not always going to be the one that i have so then i might take something from like another coach and i just try to pick and yeah. find the stuff that works best i mean I, yeah i think that's a fantastic mentality and if only more coaches had that would be a, in a much better place with the industry but <laughs> yeah <laughs> are there um, are there any coaches or instructors that you, you you've kind of seen that you haven't trained with and you'd really like to learn from any you know, like seminars you want to go to or courses or just people mm, stuff that you thought you yeah. know I, I wouldn't mind learning from those uh, definitely christopher summers would be awesome he's like a like a legend i would say <laughs> and yeah, I, I, he does the same thing with this is the approach, mm -hmm. but I still feel like he has like some, he can say that because it's the system that works so well yeah. for so many people, mm -hmm. even though it's not optimal for everyone because it's like so basic. So someone who would be more advanced wouldn't be as successful with the program because it's designed to work for everyone, yeah. which makes it has to be like super basic. So mm -hmm. it's good for some people and it's not as good for, for other people. Yeah, but he, yeah, he. I would definitely like to to learn more from in person. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's. So I, I'm obviously aware of who Coach Summers is and what he does with his programs, but he's not actually somebody I've really kind of paid attention to. So somebody I'm, I'm definitely no? into. Um, so 
when we go to your Instagram and we look at your videos, it, it, it looks like you're obviously working a lot with gymnasts, but um, yeah. who are the types of people or athletes that you, that you work with in a typical day? Well, right now I mostly work with adults because mm -hmm. that's been the area that I've chosen to focus on the most. Uh, before I've trained both kids, like uh, people in their twenties up to like 70 years old. So it's, it's a wide variety of people, which is fun because it's like a new challenge with every, every person because I can't use the same approach for a kid like I would for an adult. Yeah, of course. Which is, uh, yeah. So it gives me a good experience to work with different people. Yeah. But right now I focus on developing strong and flexible adults and help them achieve specific gymnastics goals. Yeah, ah, that's cool. Are they, are they mostly kind of um, beginners or do you, do you deal with like the high level people as well? Or is it kind of like a mixed bag? It's kind of a mix, but at the moment it's been more beginners because I have like gone back into more of the basics myself, both in training and in studying, yeah. which kind of makes me post more basic stuff, which leads to more basic uh, like clients find me. So sure. it's very dependent on what I like to focus on Yeah, because I, I find it difficult to focus on two minute things at the same time. So if I want to do basics, that's going to be like all that I do yeah. because it's hard to... Yeah, I think yeah. I want to study two things at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's um, for any, obviously anybody who's watching this on the video or listening to it on the podcast, that if you're, if you're looking for someone to learn from and you are a, a rank beginner, you know, swallow your pride a little bit and, and look for people who are, who are offering like the, the basic starting points yeah. of progressions. Don't be kind of um, enthralled by people doing crazy things with the bodies and <laughs> taking years to get yeah. there, you know. Um, certainly, I think, when you see yeah the, i think uh, yeah oh, sorry no, no, uh, no i think one of the one of the most important things when you look for a coach especially as an adult is that they themselves started as an adult sure because that's a huge point because it, i worked both like in the gymnastics gymnastics industry and more the gymnastic strength yeah. but in the gymnastics industry it's yeah it's it's not as good because coaches who was gymnast themselves as kids mm -hmm. they don't have the, the understanding of how it is to develop your body as an adult yeah and there's a lot of like reconsiderations you need to take as an adult with joint integrity mm -hmm. flexibility yeah. which is comes quite naturally to the kids so it's yeah. important if you choose a coach to choose someone who began as an adult yeah i think is absolutely yeah i completely agree i think that's 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 absolutely gold advice yeah, yeah. you find people like um tom kurz as well he says the exact same thing you know you yeah. can't use stretches that work for somebody who's at an age where they can manipulate the, the growth and shape of the joints for somebody who yeah. has the growth spurt, you know? Um, yeah, exactly. So when you're coaching somebody, what are some of the more um, common issues or problems that you, that you typically face or that you have to deal with? Mm, when it comes to coach, do you mean like physical or like... Uh, yeah, so physical, for example. So are, are there kind of like common um, flexibility restrictions or strength limitations that people have? Yeah, sure. It's pretty much the same for for most people. Oh, everyone has tight hamstrings. Mm, yeah. Tight hip, tight hip flexors. Yeah. Poor overhead flexibility. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those are like the most common ones that I see everyone has, which makes training very difficult in the beginning. Yeah. Which is why I think a lot of people have problems with pain and injuries because they just aren't physically prepared to do a lot of sports and activities. Yeah. And I think something people forget is that you need to deserve to train sports and do like CrossFit or gymnastics. Mm -hmm. You can't just do that kind of training and expect to get fit. That is the thing that you do once you have prepared, prepared the body to do yeah. the activity. Yeah. Because if you don't have like the wrist flexibility and you start doing push-ups or handstands, your wrist are going to get, yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. get to start hurting. So. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree with that. It's kind of like if you look at general preparation versus sport specific, I think... Yeah. Kind of most, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think most people kind of think of it as in a like a yearly cycle. They think, okay, so I'm in the off season, I do my general preparation work, and then sport specific. But really, you kind of yeah. need to be looking at that across your career. So if you want to get into a sport, make sure you yeah. can handle the demands of that sport. And I think that I think yeah, that's exactly. great advice. Um, yeah. So if so, obviously you've been coaching for a while, but um, and and you've learned things along the way. But if the, if you could say travel back in time to the start of your coaching career, is there any? advice or one specific tip that you would give to your younger self hmm that's kind of a difficult one <laughs> uh, let me think for a second 
what would you say, by the way, if you could travel back to yourself? Um, yeah, I like the way you, you threw that back onto me. <laughs> yeah, I, I just need to. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Second. Mine would be um, to um, in, to promote uh, the message of trial and error more because yeah. one of the things that people tend to ask for is how many repetitions should I do? How many sets should I do? How long should I do yeah. this stretch or this exercise? They want specific details, and it's like, look. It, you know, individual biology dictates you're going to have a completely different, yeah. you, you will have a completely different response to me because of our biological makeup, our, our training history, our, our psychological preferences. So mine yeah. would be to probably almost do away with um, recommendations for sets and reps and kind of just give people a starting point. Okay, so start here with, with two sets of, so I say we're talking yeah. static stretching, two sets of 30 seconds. Um, see how your body responds. If you're not getting any, any results, throw in another set. Um, yeah. you know, hold it for longer, and, and just play with the training variables. I think people are, 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 I don't know, maybe too afraid, or I don't know, but they don't want to play with the training variables, which is what you know coaches mm -hmm. do. Um, and I think a, a lot of the time, coaches, we're, we're guessing a lot of the time as well. You know, yeah. uh, you'll have a client who is doing, say, they're doing a front split and they're trying isometric stretches. They're not working. Um, and they're like, okay, what should I do next? And you think, well, tense a bit harder, a bit longer, just play with yeah. it. So yeah, I think it would be, mine to myself would be encourage people yeah. to, to play with the training variables more. Yeah, that's a good one. I've, I've noticed that myself, people like, a lot of people like to just be told exactly what to do. Yeah. And as soon as they have to choose any variables themselves, they just like freak out because it's, they have to take accountability themselves. So yeah, yeah that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, cool. And, um, and I think cool. for myself, I think the, the one thing that I would tell myself is to be more patient with mm -hmm. my training. Yeah. Because as like just a few years ago, I was a bit too, I was rushing my training basically. Yeah. And since I began gymnastics as an adult, I had to train very differently. Mm -hmm. But when I, I moved to, to Stockholm from a small town in Sweden, and, and I began training with like some of the, the national team, Mm -hmm. because i had like the yeah I was, I was lucky to to do that but then i started training just like they did but i hadn't gone through all the physical preparation that they did as kids so my body was t totally different and it did not respond as well mm -hmm. which made me overtrain and overuse some of the joints like my elbows wrists shoulders which yeah. led me to more pain and it was yeah so i think patience is key especially as an adult in like in all sports if you rush your training you're just gonna yeah 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 absolutely there are no shortcuts so yeah but i mean that that's that's probably the gold golden advice for for adults is look slow down you know stop looking for the there's this kind of um obsession with lifestyle hacks yeah. and biology hacks yeah it's ridiculous you, yeah. you're not a machine you know you you can't hack your biology you, you know your biology will only let you do so, do so much before it says uh, that's too much mm. here's an injury to slow you down you know yeah i think but you know, i guess that's I guess it's kind of like the, the society that we live in. We get everything instantly. Yeah. Take <laughs> food, drinks, we get everything right right now. So I guess it's the same thing with our bodies. We just want the results right now. But yeah, yeah. Absolutely. The, that's, a, that's a good thing to learn from, from sports, that you don't get everything right away. You need to have patience and you need to put in hard work before you get it. So Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that's great advice. Um, you mentioned before about... Um, we're talking about like the, the main limitations and you mentioned if people don't have say um, certain wrist flexibility, they, they struggle yeah. with, with push-ups. Um, so in your opinion, um, if somebody is wanting to get into gymnastic style training, what if, say they can only train at home, what would you say are the three most important exercises that they should be focusing on to kind of lay that foundation? Uh, I think push-ups is one of the most fundamental exercises. Yeah, not just because it's it's one of the best pushing exercises you can do and you can make do like an infinite amount of variations to make it more difficult yeah but it will also help you learn to control your body in a way that is going to teach you technique for a lot of other exercises yeah so you will learn to have complete body tension you will learn how to control your scapula you will yeah. develop your wrist extension mm -hmm. you will learn to control your pelvis and the core position so i think that is a great exercise to to yeah. learn a lot of the key use and techniques that you need for like every exercise that you do especially in gymnastics yeah so that is number one yeah uh, number two would probably be chin-ups as well mm -hmm. super basic but i think a lot of people don't do them in a way that is beneficial for them yeah i think i think a lot of people do pull-ups with the, the pronated grip and they like bring the chin forward and just using their arms 
yeah. instead of properly activating the scapula and the, like the rear delts, yeah. which is, I think most people want to train their back, but they end up mostly training their arms, sure. going to that rounded forward posture that we try to avoid, which the chin up is good to do if, yeah, if you want to get rid of that. Cool. So that would be number two. And number three, I think, would be either Jefferson curls or maybe hanging leg lifts for core strength. Yeah. I'm not quite sure because it depends on the person and like yeah. their specific yeah. limitations. But the Jefferson curls is also great to build up more resilience in the spine and develop hamstring flexibility. So yeah, yeah. I think that's a good, that's yeah. a good basic to, to start from. Yeah, and it's, it's great to see the Jefferson curl coming back, coming back into fashion. It, it was quite popular, you know, many many moons ago and then we have mm -hmm. this whole neutral spine kind of obsession <laughs> thanks to you yeah. know certain authors and certain books you know you have to be neutral spine when you're when you're lifting when you're, you're eating when you're going for a crap you know so <laughs> you know which is ridiculous yeah. um so yeah, yeah I mean, jefferson girl is definitely one of my top ones as well so yeah no, that's really good advice um and, and the push-up as well is, is so uh is so underrated like it so obviously your background is gymnastics mine is martial arts and yeah. You know, people come to me and say, oh, I was, you know, punching the pads or the heavy bag or the, um, you know, trying to break breeze blocks and I've got, you know, elbow pain. I'm like, oh, well, how many push-ups yeah. can you do? Well, I haven't done push-ups in 20 years. It's like, well, maybe, maybe do some <laughs> push-ups and condition the joints to actually be able to tolerate that force. But no, I think those are great yeah. questions. Yeah. And I think like the exercises themselves are not that important always. I think it's more about the execution mm -hmm. because there are like no bad exercises. I think it's a, just about how how you how you do the exercises yeah completely so i think yeah i mean a lot of people do push-ups but don't get any of the benefit from the exercise yeah and almost get hurt from it so yeah yeah I mean, yeah. yeah no that's cool um so we have a funny question now um, if you pretend that you're stranded on a desert island and you can only take <laughs> one book one piece of gym equipment and one type of food or drink what would they be Oof, that's a tough question <laughs> for my book, I think, hmm, I'm thinking that I want to bring something practical so that I could like make boats and stuff on the island, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that because I'm not a very pra <laughs> practical guy. Yeah. So maybe I, um, I would bring the art of happiness with the, the Dalai Lama, because I think that would be a good idea to like learn to be happy, <laughs> even though I was <laughs> stranded yeah. on an island. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah. would be the book I would bring. Being happy through suffering, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think that's key, especially in the, the world we live in, where a lot of people are un unhappy, even though we have more stuff than ever. So sure. I think a lot of a lot of stuff goes up, up here. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. And for gym equipment, I think about bring uh, gymnastics rings. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's a great equipment where you can do a lot of exercises, push-ups, pull-ups. You can hang them in a coconut tree and do yeah. German <laughs> hangs, and I think it would be a fun equipment to choose oh, cool, man. and food i think i would take uh, watermelon yeah all right I'll yeah like yeah no, cool, cool. yeah it's, it's, a, it, it's a good food and you get some uh, some fluid as well from yeah I think oh. cool. yeah <laughs> i'm gonna go with that oh, i like those yeah that's good um so um obviously you're getting uh, very established in, in like the kind of international coaching community but where would you like to be five years from now in, in terms of your coaching career Mm, I think like like the ultimate goal is that I would like to open up a gym, a, a gymnastics strength gym, mm -hmm. which yeah. is something that I'm working on with a. I just started a new company with a couple of friends. Yeah. And we are going to, because previously I've been focused on going internationally like yeah. to reach people all over the world, but we are going to start a business here in Sweden with more focus on being like locally and try to establish a good business in Sweden. So that is something I would like to do, to open up a gym with focus on gymnastics, strength training, and my approach to training, because that is something that we do not have yet. Yeah. Most of the gymnastics places are usually working together with CrossFit in like a box. Yeah. So gymnastics is never like the main focus, mm -hmm. which, yeah, it, it's not as fun to work when you know that what you do is not the main priority. Everyone just wants to, yeah, get the fast results, but we want to go. Yeah, yeah. for the long run yeah no, i like that um and for myself uh my goal is to be like the leading resource for gymnastics strength training online yeah so that if if somebody wants to learn something about gymnastics then they go to just gymnasticsmovement.com or 
whatever my website will be. Yeah. But that would be my ambition to, yeah, to be a, a leading resource and someone people can trust when they want to, to learn more about, about gymnastics. Very cool. Yeah, no, I, I like that. I'm really looking forward to what you're doing uh, or what you're going to be doing in, in the years to come. Because like I say, I mean, right now you're, you know, in my opinion, one of the top, you know, gymnastic coaches, um, you know, people will say to me, you know, they'll send me a message, you know, well, what do you think of Vito Portal? And I'm like, well, he's all right, but, you know, <laughs> go check out Sid instead if you want, you know, useful information that it's not going to, you know, you know, yeah. remortgage your house for, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's difficult with those, like the, all those culture and like, it's, it's hard to recommend when they have like that cult feeling. It's just, yeah, exactly. I don't know, when you don't like the person who does it, it's hard to recommend them, even if the approach is useful. Yeah. So I think it's, yeah, being humble and just being able to, to learn from others and tell others that you do that is something that builds yeah. confidence, I think. And so people can trust you. Yeah. Because you, you can tell when someone just want to have their approach, but you can tell that they've been influenced by other people mm -hmm. and they just don't have the confidence to, to tell that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's nobody kind of owns the, the exercise <laughs> information i mean yeah. in the, the next podcast one of the questions somebody said uh, sent to me is you know i i've been doing this I, I teach this kind of class and somebody who's just moved into the gym has said that their system owns those exercises and then the names to them so I have to stop teachers like no because yeah. you, you can't copyright a system or well, you can a name <laughs> you can't copyright human movement you know it belongs yeah. to all of us and you know we need to be doing away with this you know all you know this kind of protect my kind of territory you know this very tribal mentality where people you know they, they try to keep hold of what they think is theirs at the end of the day the, the the more we can lift each other up and this is one of the reasons why you know i've asked you to do this interview and, and get you on the podcast is because yeah. we're going to go much further and, and ultimately help the public the more we we help each other you know and lift each other yeah. up. So, um but be, i mean so those are my questions and you give them some great answers so thank you for that but be, before we finish um, can you tell the audience where they can find you um, on the internet, on, on social media or, or email, just so they can get in contact with you? Yeah, sure. You can just search for Sid Paulton. Uh, that's my name. And you can find me on most places with that name because it's quite a unique name. So yeah. it's, uh, it's easy to find me. On Instagram, it's Sid Paulson one yeah. because Sid Paulson was, uh, somebody took it. <laughs> and I, I tried to get it back, but they were not, yeah, they didn't want to give it to me. So, <laughs> but I tried. And you can also find me on YouTube at Sid Paulson as well, where I post more longer tutorials on gymnastics, strength, and all that stuff. Yep. And gymnasticsmovement.com uh, if you want to uh, join online coaching, get some uh, online courses, or wants to, yeah. Yeah, awesome. More of the paid contents. Yeah, very good. Well, I, I, like you say, that, um, that's the end of you know, my questions. But um, you know, thank you for your time. The questions you've given have been brilliant. Uh, and again, yeah. I, you know, I'm just really looking forward to, to what you're going to be doing and I'll keep recommending people to go and see the stuff that you're doing. So, um, yeah, all the best. And hopefully we can chat again soon, mate. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for the interview. All right, buddy. Take it easy. You too. All right. Bye-bye.